Welcome back, everybody, to the Nerdcore Podcast, the podcast reviews of movies and talks that nerd shit. This is episode 665, and it is your review of Poor Things. As always, it is the Nerd Chicago here to host the show on my wonderful co host, Brad Young Yoda. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a wonderful whatever the day this is. Yep. It, this is going up on Monday at 12 Monday. p.m. for wonderful people. But if you're on Patreon, you get this episode early because it's recorded early for y'all on patreon.com slash the nerd the nerd core. I'm sorry, the nerd core at the $1 tier. You get this episode for about um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like four days, pretty much four days, like three to four days for for, before anybody else gets to watch it. So you guys should go and check that out over at patreon.com slash nerd core at the $1 tier. But of course, before we get into today's review, Brad, I, I know I already asked you this because we, we did something before this, but how, how are you, Brad? Doing well, doing well, Raul. Yeah. It's always difficult when we do two in a day for you for me to ask you that. Cause I already yeah, because it's just like, I got to repeat that I got I watched uh, Shogun, which is great, and I, yeah. I can't reveal anything until Raul watches it because yeah. holy shit. Brad's, Brad's having a hard time here, man. Mm-hmm. He's like, I really, I really I, want I to need you to I need you to watch it like you need me to watch Dune, so I, I, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you still haven't gone to see Dune, so hey, I watch poor things <laughs> because it's on streaming. <laughs> At this point, I'm, I'm I'm just gonna have to reach out to the fucking review crew to see if they can come on to do Dune. Yeah, you have so much money in gift cards, Brad. I know. I'm pretty sure those shit. It's just the travel time. up there, and it's a very poor time because it's right around Brenda's birthday, so. <laughs> It's just a very poor time. Man, bro. Ah, uh, well, nonetheless, um, right. I've just I've I've like I told you before, I've been doing this 30 days, 30 different movies, 30 different countries. He's on day so, 14. Day 14. A movie per day, Red. He's halfway there. Some of these days I've had two movies per day. He may like fall today. asleep at work. We don't know. Yeah, i definitely yeah. Um it's been fun. <laughs> Yeah, good movies, good, great cinema, man. I've, That's the only good thing about it. If you had just yeah. watched like, you know, like seven in a row that were terrible, it'd be like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck did I choose? <laughs> Why did I do this? Yeah, yeah. But uh, I you, filmed we, my video. We, we've only had two months that have gone like that. That's yeah. mostly from my poor choices. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Um, that did you see that they're bringing back uncut gems to theaters though? For what? Uh, they're doing the A24X IMAX, so they're okay. bringing back um, Uncut Gems, Ex Machina, and Hereditary in uh, in in IMAX. Dude, why would you, why would you need Uncut Gems in IMAX? If you want to feel more anxious, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Hereditary I can kind of get for a few scenes. <laughs> oh, put that shit in 3D. <laughs> yeah, so that shit is flying at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man <laughs> but um yeah it's um Tony yeah that's that I mean, it's pretty cool man i think i think it's pretty cool i want to go see um i've seen uncut gems in theaters before and i've seen it so many times on physical right, you've never seen adam sandler 20 40 feet tall yeah. 20 feet tall how the fuck fucking tall shit. imax is <laughs> yeah. you're like no sir <laughs> Yeah, I just want to see that like blown up right there when he's doing. I'm so sad. I'm so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> when he's getting the fucking what's it called the the colonoscopy in the first scene. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, Brad. You never had Opal. <laughs> it's some this some this what's it called this some History Channel some Middle Earth shit. <laughs> Congrats, Larry. You're a Jew again. <laughs> You fucked a weekend? <laughs> oh my god, bro! What a what a movie! Um, I do want to try to go see Ex Machina just for the uh, what's it called Oscar Isaac doing the dance. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! You know, I don't bro. think I've seen Ex Machina yet. Damn good sci-fi film, Brad. You should yeah. watch it. Yeah, I'm waiting for that guy to release five movies so I can do a month because it's like he only has uh, Ex Machina, Annihilation, Men. And what's it called now? Civil War is about to drop, which is his oh, yeah. next movie. Yeah, Civil War. And we've already reviewed Men, so you know, yeah, yeah. I just have to start picking them for other stuff. 
<laughs> yeah. I like Ex Machina though. Great movie. And a great dance scene from uh, from Oscar Isaac. Mm. Today we're going to be discussing our first ever Yorgos Lanthimos film on the channel. This might be the first one that Brad watches, but this is definitely not the first one I've watched from him. Lots of movies I've seen from him. Actually, I watched one of his movies yesterday for uh, for because he's from he's from Greece, and I watched one of his Greek films. So, um, yeah, without further ado, Brad, I think we should get into this because I'm sure that people are going to want to know our thoughts about this movie. I. Sure. And predicting that we, I, you know what, Brad? I might, we might not even get a comment on this, but I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna comment on something on this video. Mm. Somebody. Yeah. With that said, Brad, if you have not watched um, Poor Things, you wanna, if you care about spoilers, you should probably get out of here. If you care, but if you don't care about spoilers or you've already seen the film, go ahead and stay. Either way, how it goes is your one and only spoiler warning. It is in effect in a five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> All right, Brad. Now let's go ahead and read from Wikipedia here. I look that banner. I love that banner. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Things is a 2023 film directed by Yorgos Lantimos and written by Tony McNamara based on the 1992 novel by uh, Alasdair Gray, a co-production between Ireland, the United Kingdom, and the United States. The film stars Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, Willem Dafoe, Rami Youssef, Christopher Abbott, and Jared Carmichael. It focuses on Bella Baxter, a young woman in Victorian London who is brought back to life via brain, brain transplant and embarks on an odyssey of self-discovery. Principal photography took place in Hungary from August to December 2021. Poor Things premiered at the 80th Venice Film Festival, Venice International Film Festival on September 1st, 2023 and won the Golden Lion there. The film was released theatrically in the United States on December 8th, 2023 and in the United Kingdom and Ireland on July 12th. 2024 uh, by Searchlight Pictures. It has grossed over $108 million worldwide on a budget of $35 million. God damn. <laughs> Poor Things was named one of the top 10 films of 2023 by the National Board of Review and the American Film Institute and received numerous other accolades, including four wins at the 96th Academy Awards, two wins at the 81st Golden Globe Awards, and five wins at the 77th British, film, uh, British Academy Film Awards, with Stone winning Best Actress at each of these ceremonies. Um, uh, cinematography is done by Robbie Ryan, who I believe has done his other stuff. Yes, <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, yeah, he did. What's it called? Uh, the favorite. Yeah. Yes. Edited by oh my god, Yorgos Mavs Mavros Mavropridis. Yep, which is the editor that works with Yorgos Lantimos on all his movies. Music is done by Yerskin Fendrix. And it sits at two hours and 22 minutes. And on a budget of 35, it made $108.7 million at the box office. As a fucking success. Man, it's a success, Brad. All right, man. Um, whew. Let's do this, Brad. What are I your got... initial thoughts? No, no, no. I'm having you start this one. Uh, let me go back to my review. Yeah, I'm not having you start this one. Because I think there was a specific way that I explained this movie. Because I... Why are you going to have me started, Brad? Because I started the last one. Yeah. I forget you if want, I started the horse one. Attack, you want them to attack one? me first, Brad. Well, I want... More than likely, like... So, based on our YouTube, most people stop at around the four-minute mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm just making it more. <laughs> yeah. Bro, um, bro, bro, we've been doing this too long. You already know what I'm doing. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll go ahead and just read my letterbox review here that I put for it. Poor Things is delightful, absurd mastery at its finest. Emma Stone is electric and transforms from start to finish as Bella Baxter. Yorgo's direction is so fluid, but if I felt it could have been edited down. What a funny film too. I wish more films like this were made. I also described it as a sexual Frankenstein fairy tale that what's it called? I really, I really like this movie. This is one of my favorite movies of last year. And yeah, just absurd as hell, but fucking great, Brad. Brad, what are your initial thoughts? I, I definitely agree with the absurdity. This movie's wild. And you know, I, I put this off watching this because there's like three or four other Frankenstein ish movies running around 
that I didn't know. I don't know which is good and which isn't. So I kind of just put this off, being like, I don't know which fucking Frankenstein movie this is. Yeah. And then it, then it showed up streaming, and I was like, I think Roll said he wanted to review this, so I will, I will go ahead and turn this on, and I did. And um, there are not a lot of movies written like this. This oh, no. this story is out there. This is this is almost like a racer head in a way. I'm probably gonna get yeah. shit for that, aren't I? <laughs> probably, man. <laughs> but like, like an absurdist, almost just nonsensical version of Frankenstein. And I, I, I mean, but you, you, you watch this the whole way through, just intrigued with it, just intrigued with you know the very first scene as a woman jumping from a bridge that you you believed is to her death and then to go from that to you know th this class where they're showing you know autopsies and how to you know parts of the body old school yeah and then you go into this uh i, I, I don't know like dr frankenstein's monster looking like but he's the doctor and he's burping up gaseous bubbles because you know his dad Dad was a creepy motherfucker who cut him open and did experiments. And then you'd see, you know, Emma Stone's character walk in and it's just like, okay, Emma Stone is a four-year-old? Two-year-old? Yeah. Like, what? And it just goes from there and it stays crazy. And then, like, Mark Ruffalo shows up, like the creepy uncle. <laughs> Um, yeah, it just, it just snowballs from there. And honestly, I don't really know how to feel about this movie other than I couldn't take my eyes off of it. I and think that says a lot the, about it. And, and the story is, is, you know, I, I mean, the story doesn't shake away from you're watching someone who basically had no choice to making her own choices. That, that's, that's yeah. the story. Yeah. Um, I think that I, I love poor things, man. I there's so first of all, like the production design is incredible. Oh, this movie, like Whew. like I, I'm trying to figure out what this like reminded me of. Um, like like the cityscape when when she's on the roof and you just see the city out there, and I, I feel like you like there was a like there were like floating balloons and shit in the background, or like a fireball or something that was going up. But just seeing like old, I guess London was that London? Yeah. Whatever the hell. Victorian London, yeah. Yeah, and it, I, I was just kind of amazed the look of this film because it, it reminds me of like old plays, you know, the sets on the play. So you got yeah. the foreground and then like a painted background, but the background's moving. Yeah, and and then the costumes, Brad. The costumes are marvelous. I mean, it looks beautiful man i mean emma stone must have had like 40 wardrobe changes at least in this yeah. movie <laughs> yeah and, and and look man um i know the elephant in the room that everybody's like like oh there's a lot of sex in it like and he's and she has like the brain of a like a, a toddler in there so it's like and and i'm look man i'm i'm, I'm sorry but i still love the movie and you know, I, I, I do agree with what Yorgos had to say about it. Um, he, I, mean, I mean, if you... So here's the thing, though. If you stop this movie, like, at the halfway point, you don't get the full, like, visual of this thing. Of, of what's actually happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's true, Brad. Like, you don't... If you don't make it all the way through, you're not going to see the part where, like, oh, where Bella does about her agency and she like becomes more like selective of who she actually sleeps with and, and she, she, as she as she gains more knowledge from literature and just from overall just people and experiences that you know that changes how she thinks to the point where her ex-husband shows up and she's like no like you're a bastard to that point <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but um, 
and, and like I said, what's it called? Um, like I said, man, I, I think that what, what Yorko had to say was the truth. Like, like he says, like he just feels that um that if you're if you walk out of this film and your only takeaway that you care about is the fact that like it's the brain of a child in there, it's like you didn't really understand what this movie's trying to do. And it's so very surface level for you to just be like, oh, the sex, the sex, the sex. It's like it's like, but like there's there's a there's a journey that Bella goes through because she's she has no shame. Like she oh, has and, no then, shame. and then that, that sex is basically used as, as like a weapon of control in a yeah. way by the men. And then by the end of this, she turns it around and uses it herself to the yeah. point she breaks uh breaks Duncan Wedderburn's character. Yeah. And he's in an insane asylum. So I I I mean it kind of goes both ways in a way. Yeah. Um, I think cinematography is fantastic, Brad. Uh, I think that Emma Stone's performance is it's incredible. I mean, she loses herself. Absolutely fucking loses herself in this role. Do you think she be, beats Lily Gladstone, though? She did beat Lily Gladstone, Brad. She did. But yeah. do you think she should have? No. I think that... that I, I don't either. I don't, I don't either. Yeah. I think Lily Gladstone should have won. So I think that Lily's... What's it called? Uh, and then it's not because of what y'all think. It's like, oh, it's probably because she's Native American. We're like, no, no, because she was a better, had a better performance. Even though this was a great performance. Yeah, this is a great. But like I said, Brad, this and Sandra Huller in Anatomy of a Fall were the only two people that I was going to accept her losing to. If she was going to lose to anybody. It was going to be either Emma Stone or Sandra Huller in uh in, in Anatomy of a Fall. And see, and I think you had told me this before. I didn't understand that because I hadn't, I hadn't seen those movies yet. Yeah. And so I, after watching them, I get it. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Like, like, and, and you see it, man. Like in here, it's just, it's, it's her, it's her, it's her, to me, it's, it, this is Emma Stone's best work, man. Like, I don't, I, sorry guys. I, I was not a fan of La La Land. I do not think she should have won for La La Land. But this one, she fucking deserves it, man. Like, this one really was a great film, and she does a great job in it. Um, Mark Ruffalo is... <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll just go out and say it and be like, Mark Ruffalo was truly the only honest character in this story, like, for the whole the whole damn thing. Yeah. I mean, was he a piece of shit? Yeah. But he was honest about, you know, what he wanted and why he wanted it. Yeah. He, was a, he was a giant asshole, but I, I mean, because you look at it and all the other characters, they were either lying to, you know, protect her in a way or just to, you know, control her. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like nobody else really kind of had Bella's interest in it. And, and I think that's why what's makes that's what makes people really uncomfortable. It's like, yeah, that's the people that she's being surrounded with. Like even Willem Dafoe, like, like he realizes like, I kind of let her, I need, I need to let her do her own thing. Like, yeah, which I, I mean, that's, that's a big thing is he's trying to control her, trying to keep her boxed in because he doesn't want her to like get hurt or, you know, um, to her to run away or I guess her to realize that maybe he is kind of a monster. And, yeah. you know, at, at the end of it, yeah, he, he makes the decision uh, to, um, you know, yeah, she's she's got to go, you know, she's making this decision and I'd rather her make this decision than her to, you know, either do, do something drastic. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, um, and then you have like Rami Youssef, who's like Rami Youssef's character is kind of like, well, I, I want you to be this way, but only for me. Like, I well, like R Rami Youssef's character is, is basically a coward. Yeah. That's, that's kind of, kind of it because he doesn't tell, you know, Bella like her story, even though he knows it and he doesn't stand up, to uh godwin when he should and then on top of it he basically you know i i, I mean he he's basically just a coward in this film like he doesn't do anything he, he threatens to go after duncan and then bella kind of thwarts that yeah yeah but um yeah, and, and and like who else? Um, and then the people who come looking for her, of course. Um, I love that she puts the freaking goat brain in, <laughs> into into the guy. Oh, the 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 uh, what the hell was he? Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, Harry Harry Astley was that it? Um, no, no, it was what's it called? Um, 
Alfie. Alfie, 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 Alfie. Yeah, Christopher yeah. Abbott as Alfie Blessington, who was, I guess, a general or a colonel or yeah, some kind of some kind of war hero who was an absolute uh, just horrible monster. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I mean, what's great is you start this film off with a woman who believes she has no other way out of her life. How it is, she's trapped in this house where she gets to make no choices and where you know maybe she comes to realize she's a horrible person based on just staff her staff reaction to her um mm -hmm. and then her to completely you know she gets a second chance in a way to like relearn things in a different way than her previous life and through that she sees what a monster her ex-husband is and then does something about it and has yeah. the power and the will to do something about it instead of just thinking the only way out of it was to take her own life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here, I, I think I found, um, um, I found the interview, man. Um, because like, they asked him, I think they asked him, dude, um, about it. Um, but, ah, uh, it's hard to find it. I, I saw it on Twitter and I wish I would have kept the link, but I mean, it's just, I don't know, you man. Know, you know what this this movie kind of gives it kind of gives me Adam Family's Adam vibe. Family? Yeah. yeah, Adam's family. I know vibe. that they took a lot of inspiration from Bram Stoker's Dracula. Like, I, I mean, a... just with just with the like the 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 duck dog and uh... yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, because they ask him what's it called? Uh, um, they ask him much of buzz about around poor things has been that it's this feminist document. Look at how every man. Uh, even those who love Bella is trying to take something from her. How do you see it? And um, uh, I actually think it's dangerous to go much into those conversations because things start becoming a little too one dimensional. Like there's only this one asp there's only this aspect of this film, and this is what we're thinking this is and what we're trying what we're trying to do. I try to m make films more open than that, which and that's what I agree. That's what, what I agree, and I think that's kind of like what you're saying, Brad. Like if you only attach this one thing from the film. You're missing the message that the other half of this film is trying to say. Yeah. And yes, it is very graphic. And there's a lot, a lot going of, on here. And it has a lot of, you know, a lot of sexual choices in it for sure. Yeah. But there's something that's being said with all that. And there's something that is trying to be, what's it called, uh, brought forward. And well, well, what's great. I, I mean, um, Bella starts out as a very selfish person, which, you know, granted, yeah. you know, children are very selfish people. So it's almost kind of a parallel to that. And then through her experience and learning and knowledge, I, I mean, she, she, her conversation on the boat with uh, the old lady is, is great because she, Bella, all Bella knows is like, she likes sex. Yeah, and the old lady's like, ah, you know, I haven't had that in like twenty years, but I'm not mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> and Bella's like, huh? And then you you get, you know, she uh, goes with Harry Astley because he's like, you know, I'll, I'll show you like you need to see what pain is, like pain in the world, and he shows her this, and it's to the point Bella can't take it. Yeah, which I I think that's such a powerful scene, Brad. Oh yeah, like it's just like the way that she just like breaks down and he's like, yeah, like. There's all these things that like you feel like are, are right for yourself. And like she's like there, just like like there's so much ugliness too. And I think that's a really big point in her where she realizes like maybe the people who are the, the people have been taking advantage of me. Like look at how these people are being taken advantage. I feel like yeah. I've been taken advantage of too. Or or she, you know, she hasn't been aware of it and now she has become aware of it and yeah. just how selfish herself has been just running around the world with you know duncan yeah. um also another great scene is um when she takes all duncan's money and <laughs> gives it, it poor. Gi gives it to the sailor that says yeah i'll i'll give it to the poor yeah yeah <laughs> which you know that money never no made it to the poor. never made it to the fucking poor bro yeah and that's should... again a man taking advantage of her yeah in that situation yeah so like in and, and like Yorgo says, like I'm not gonna be here to say if this is a feminist film or not. And I'm what's it called? Because that's not my decision to make on that. I think it has a very in, what's it called? I think it has very interesting uh 
discussions about how women are treated. Do does that automatically make it a feminist film? I don't know. I think that is for them to what's it called for people to decide. But I think that's such a one one part of this movie. And I think that there's other things that this movie offers that that what's it called are, are much more um uh that you can discuss as well. But I really yeah, like this movie, man. Well, I think what, it's great. What do you what genre do you consider this? Because it's not really a horror. I mean, and it's it's like it's almost like mad scientist. I just want to yeah. freaking call this it. for the this for the this for the weirdos, bro. This is, yeah, this, this is, is some this David is for, Lynch shit. This is for this is for the lovers of weirdo cinema, baby. Some this David is, Lynch shit. Up in here, yeah. Some eraser head. Yeah, for the fans of Brandy, uh, for the fans of David Cronenberg, uh, David Lynch. <laughs> what's it called? This is this is your this is your this is your this is, this is, this is up your is, wheelhouse. This is your uh, bread and butter right there. This is your bread and butter, right? <laughs> yeah. This is all for you, man. This is but this is what for... an interesting concept and movie. Above yeah. all, I mean, even if you don't like this, just the look of it, and just I, I don't. It's just weirdly interesting. Yeah. Just I, and you know these stories don't happen a lot anymore. And I think like Brad, this. what like what's most interesting? You're saying like you don't really know exactly how to feel about this movie, Brad, but you still kept watching. Like yeah, you didn't no, you're you're ever, like, like you're like you're wanting to know like. Okay, what is happening to this character? That, yeah. that what is happening to this Bella Baxter, who's not really Bella Baxter? She has a whole story before, but by the end of this, you're like, oh, I get it. She is Bella Baxter now yeah. because that old person is gone, and this new person who has all these new memories and experiences and adventures that develop her. She can't be her old person anymore. Damn sure. Uh Brad, what's your final verdict? <sighs> I'm so just confused by this film sometimes. I don't I've I'm feeling like a nine out of ten. I'm feeling like like I'm feeling like an eight and a half to nine out of ten. And I don't know which one to go with, so I'll go middle eight point seven five. Okay. Um I give this a nine out of ten. It's a great movie, and I also just remembered I need to go pick this up on Blu-ray. It's already out. It's already out. It's already out. It's already out on Blu-ray. Then I still still book. <laughs> yeah, the Furious Jumping Edition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wish they you had mean Furious Jumping. This although, is a... although, just just the just Mark Ruffalo and the idea of Mark Ruffalo and Emma Stone just kind of yeah. makes me like. Also, the dance scene. The dance scene, Brad. The dance. Number. Oh my God, the dance scene. Beautiful, awesome, better than Barbie, better <laughs> dancing than Barbies. Than oh Barbie. my! It was Tarantino esque. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god! I love that somebody's review of this movie is literally Barbie for but for mentally ill people. <laughs> I still haven't watched Barbie. Yeah, they hate to see a bitch with childlike wonder. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But um, I mean, but I, but that's the that's the thing is. You know, it's life. Life is kind of easy when you're um very ignorant to the the pain and suffering around. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that great art is complex. It has multiple conversations happening around it, and I think that great art is supposed to make you have these conversations. It, it's supposed to make you feel something. Not supposed to be an hour 30 to two hours of shut your brain off all the time. Yeah. So the fact that people have something to say, people are feeling something out of it, whether that is anger, whether that is what's it called? Um, distaste, other feelings, dislike, distaste, like you're feeling something. And I think that has a lot to say about it. And, you know, some people hold their convictions very close to their heart and very, and that, that's you. And I'm sorry, but like, that's not, that's not me, but you know, that's just the way that you approach film and that's the way you approach it. And I, I think that this movie, a lot of it has to, a lot, that it says a lot about this movie that it can elicit so many different reactions. To it. I th and I think you have to give this movie credit for that and for it to doing something different. Yeah. Because I, I, I mean, we've watched a lot of movies on the show and we've watched a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, this is up there with weird, it goes but up there it's with also up head. there with good weird. Yeah, 
It's uh, a well-made weird movie. Yeah, damn straight. That concludes our review of Poor Things. And as always, we want to thank you all so much for joining us. Check out our website, nerdcore.com, Twitter at the nerdcore underscore, Instagram at the nerdcore, and threads at the nerdcore as well. TikTok at the nerdcore. And we have our wonderful Patreon, uh, I'm sorry, Discord server where you can talk to us about all his, uh, all of Yorgos' films, Let's talk about Poor Things. Do y'all think, what do you guys think? In the comments, tell me who should have won, Lily Gladstone or Emma Stone? Tell us in the comments. And we would like to hear your thoughts. Also hear your thoughts on this film because we would like to talk to you guys about it. Be respectful. Be kind. You know, I know that we... I, I, look, guys, I don't want to be called a fucking pedo, okay? I don't want to fucking call a pedo in the comments, guys. Just because I like this movie. So y'all just got to be kind, okay? Be nice. Uh, we're discussing film. We're discussing a film here, guys. We're not We're not doing anything crazy here. Um, but... Uh, do that in the comment, guys, in the comments. And of course, um, if you're please, would you please uh, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and leave a like on the video. All that helps us out so much. On the audio side of things, I just noticed, Brad, I didn't do this on the last episode. On the audio side of things, make sure you leave a five star review and you follow us on that on your favorite podcast app of choice. It would really help us out a lot. And of course, we would really, uh, what's it called? Um, really appreciate if you guys, um, that's it. Yeah, if you guys just follow us and stuff, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, we want to thank our patrons because they make this possible. You can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash nerdcore and pledge us at a $1 tier where you get this episode early before anybody else gets to watch it or listen to it on Monday at 12 p.m. Central Time. And of course, Brad, we want to talk about our wonderful executive producer, Shane. Where can you find it, Brad? You can find him, Shane, at twitch.tv slash XSRK or on Twitter at thrifted.io or go buy something from the stuffy guy at prisoncityvintage.com. Damn straight. Go and check them out, guys. Brad, we have a we gotta talk about Moyorgos, man. We gotta talk about Moyorgos because he's got some he's got some fucking crazy movies, man. <laughs> we got I I mean we had a whole month on uh what the hell his name was. Uh oh uh, I can't even remember the freaking movie. But he was gonna do Dune. Oh uh, Horoski? Hodorowski, yeah, Hodorowski. Yeah. Which yeah, I, that that was a weird month, but that was most of it was pretty good weird. Yeah, but uh, this is like the only one we've talked about from Yorgos, and he's got other movies, man. And like, I mean, Barry, like, Killing oh, the, of a Sacred Deer with fucking Barry Keoghan, bro. Yeah, like, that Killing of a Sacred Deer. That's that's one that I've been wanting to watch. And then yeah. Lobster, Lobster is another one I've been wanting to watch. Yeah, fucking good, man. He's a good ass director, bro. I can't wait for his next film. I can't believe um, Lobster was 2015. I thought that movie was a lot more recent. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, Brad. Like, <laughs> time. Time. It's crazy. Uh, but with that said, we're getting out of here, Brad. Let's go ahead and send him out. All right, Raul. Thank you for being host as always. Thank you to our, uh, all those who join us in future chats. Thank you to all the listeners out there, all our Patreon supporters. We appreciate each and every one of you. And to end this film, um, uh, don't try to figure out wh which thigh is softer. <laughs> Young Yoda out.